The U.S. has new intelligence of a, quote, serious national security threat. Nukes in space, really? U.S. defense officials are scrambling, confronting an unprecedented challenge. Reports suggest Russia is poised to shatter a long-held taboo, a nuclear weapon destined for space. This bold move violates a treaty meant to protect our planet, a treaty that has kept the specter of nuclear devastation at bay. Raising questions about Russia's intentions. Can the U.S. counter this terrifying new threat? Will the final frontier become the ultimate nuclear battlefield? Join us as we dissect the chilling implications of Russia's covert space weapon. A new and unsettling rumor has emerged from the shadows of global power struggles where nations constantly flex their military might. Whispers of a secret Russian space weapon, a weapon with the potential to devastate the United States and its NATO allies, have sent shockwaves through intelligence communities and defense circles worldwide. This clandestine project threatens to fundamentally alter the balance of power and usher in a dangerous new era of space-based conflict. The specter of this alleged weapon system is particularly chilling against the backdrop of escalating tensions between Russia and the West. Memories of the Cold War loom as Russia's resurgent under President Vladimir Putin seeks to reassert its global influence. The ongoing conflict in Ukraine, fueled by Russia's annexation of Crimea and support for separatist forces, has only deepened the divide between East and West. Now the rumors of a nuclear space weapon add a terrifying new dimension to this growing rivalry. This alleged weapon, cloaked in secrecy and speculation, reportedly involves the capability of Russia to deploy a nuclear device in orbit. Such a weapon could target and cripple or even destroy vital U.S. and NATO satellites that underpin everything from military command and control to GPS navigation systems, weather forecasting, and financial networks. A deliberate attack on this satellite infrastructure would have far-reaching and unpredictable consequences for the world. While there's an element of uncertainty surrounding the nature of this alleged weapon, the potential ramifications are undeniably catastrophic. A large-scale attack on orbit could plunge the globe into disarray in a world deeply dependent on satellites for communication, banking, navigation, and countless other critical systems. This isn't simply a military concern, it's about the infrastructure underpinning modern society as we know it. Fear and alarm have understandably rippled through intelligence agencies and policy circles globally. The race is on to verify these claims and analyze the technical feasibility of Russia's purported capabilities. Behind closed doors, frantic discussions are undoubtedly underway to assess the threat, devise potential countermeasures, and determine a strategic response. This chilling situation raises fundamental questions about the future of global security. Are we witnessing a new arms race, this time with space as the ultimate battleground? Will long-standing treaties and unspoken rules of engagement meant to preserve stability in space be shattered? The stakes are higher than ever before, as the militarization of Earth's orbit threatens to propel us into an unprecedented era of warfare. According to sources familiar with U.S. intelligence, this weapon, classified as a nuclear EMP device, would generate a powerful electromagnetic pulse and a surge of highly charged particles upon detonation. Imagine a massive wave of disruptive energy rippling through space, capable of wreaking havoc on vital satellite systems that underpin global communications, navigation, and commerce. The threat is particularly alarming because, even though this weapon is still under development and not yet operationalized, it signals a potential escalation in space warfare tactics. If deployed, it would represent a brazen violation of the 1967 Outer Space Treaty, which explicitly prohibits the placement of weapons of mass destruction WMDs, in orbit. This is not Russia's first time pursuing anti-satellite ASAT technologies. During the Cold War, the Soviets and the U.S. actively developed programs, including ground-based and co-orbital systems designed to intercept or destroy satellites. Now, the focus has shifted toward more sophisticated capabilities. The potential consequences of a large-scale nuclear EMP detonation in orbit are staggering. It could disrupt or disable vast swaths of commercial and government satellites, many operating in low-Earth orbit. These satellite systems are the backbone of modern society, facilitating everything from phone calls and financial transactions to internet connectivity and GPS navigation. This kind of attack could cripple critical infrastructure and plunge the world into a communication blackout. 
It's also important to note that this weapon would not discriminate between civilian and military satellites. While the potential impact on military command and control is significant, the disruption to everyday life for ordinary citizens could be far more critical and more unpredictable. Experts speculate that even major constellations like SpaceX's Starlink, which has proven effective for the Ukrainian war effort, could be vulnerable to such a weapon. The implications of employing a scorched earth strategy in space are alarming. Russia would essentially harm its satellite infrastructure, turning it into a weapon that could be used as a last resort. Furthermore, the technical hurdles involved in creating and deploying a nuclear electromagnetic pulse EMP device into space are significant. Russia has encountered difficulties in other nuclear technology projects, indicating a challenging journey toward complete weaponization. Despite these challenges, the recent intelligence assessment that revealed Russia's progress in this area was so alarming that it prompted U.S. Congress members' warnings and ultimately forced the Biden administration to disclose the threat publicly. The sensitivity of the intelligence sources used to track Russia's progress has sparked concern within the intelligence community, prompting them to reassess how to safeguard these sources. While a complete picture of Russia's capabilities remains shrouded in secrecy, one thing is sure. The continued development of this weapon system raises the specter of a new and dangerous arms race in space. The world faces a stark choice, with existing treaties under threat and the game's rules rapidly evolving. Will we allow space to become the next frontier for warfare, or can international cooperation and diplomacy prevail to preserve this critical domain for the benefit of all mankind? With the historical context laid out, a crucial question remains unanswered. How did Russia develop this purported space weapon capability? And what is its place within its broader military strategy? Let's find out. The Soviet Union's pursuit of a nuclear space weapon harkens back to a complex and often secretive history of space exploration intertwined with military ambition. Understanding this history is crucial to grasping the motivations behind Russia's alleged weapon system and the potential consequences for the future of space security. The seeds of the Soviet space program were sown in the theoretical works of visionaries like Konstantin Tsiolkovsky. A pioneer of astronautic theory, Tsiolkovsky's ideas about multi-stage rockets and space exploration captured the imagination of young engineers and scientists, among them the brilliant Sergei Korolev, who would rise to lead the Soviet space effort. The Gas Dynamics Laboratory, GDL, established in 1921, focused on solid fuel rocket development, while Korolev's interests expanded Soviet research into liquid-fueled rockets, laying the foundation for future breakthroughs. Efforts gained momentum when these smaller groups were merged into the Reactive Scientific Research Institute, R&U, in 1933. This consolidation brought together some of the brightest minds in Soviet rocketry, resulting in innovations like the first rocket-powered aircraft and the Katyusha multiple rocket launcher, a formidable weapon of World War II. The events and technological advancements of World War II significantly shaped the trajectory of the Soviet space program. While Soviet engineers advanced rocket-powered weaponry, Nazi Germany was developing the V-2 ballistic missile, a technological marvel that far surpassed any existing Soviet capability. In the war's immediate aftermath, the Soviet Union and the United States began a race to capture German rocket expertise. The Soviets, recognizing the immense potential of the V-2, sent teams of rocket specialists to collect and, where possible, repatriate German engineers and scientists. This influx of technical knowledge jump-started early Soviet missile development. The Soviet space program achieved global recognition and a seismic shift in the geopolitical landscape with the successful launch of Sputnik 1 in 1957. This small, beeping satellite symbolized Soviet technological prowess, shaking the United States out of complacency and sparking the space race. However, the Soviet program had always been intimately connected to military ambitions. The R-7 Intercontinental Ballistic Missile ICBM, designed for nuclear warhead delivery, also served as the launch vehicle for Sputnik. Sergei Korolev, the visionary known only as the chief designer to maintain secrecy, skillfully leveraged this spectacular propaganda victory to gain support for more ambitious space endeavors. Fueled by intense Cold War rivalry with the United States, the Soviet space program became a multifaceted behemoth. While the public focused on spectacular firsts, a significant portion of the program was dedicated to military objectives, 
Alongside the development of Earth-orbiting satellites for navigation, survey, and communication came a growing emphasis on the militarization of space. The dramatic launch of Sputnik, while a triumph of science and engineering, also ignited a scramble for military dominance in space. The U.S. and the Soviet Union recognized the strategic value of utilizing Earth's orbit as a new arena for surveillance, navigation, communication, and, potentially, weaponry. The Soviet push to neutralize America's growing reliance on satellites for military advantage was the driving force behind its pursuit of anti-satellite, AESAT, capabilities. Early AESAT efforts focused on ground-launched missiles designed to intercept and destroy satellites in low Earth orbit directly. However, these systems faced significant challenges, including precise targeting in the vast space expanse and the relatively slow speed of a ground launch. The United States was also actively exploring its own ASAT programs. Projects like the Bold Orion air-launched ballistic missile system and High Virgo, which aimed to intercept satellites using nuclear warheads, highlighted the focus on developing countermeasures to emerging space-based threats. In parallel with these direct kinetic methods, the Soviets experimented with co-orbital ASATs. These satellites were designed to approach their target and explode in proximity, potentially destroying them via fragmentation. Though these programs yielded limited success, they foreshadowed the technological battles as the focus shifted towards smaller, more maneuverable satellite interceptors. International efforts to curb this arms race materialized in the 1980 anti-ballistic missile ABM, treaty between the U.S. and the USSR. While primarily focused on limiting ground-based missile defense systems, this treaty effectively restricted the testing and deployment of space-based weapons. However, this did not extinguish the underlying motivations and technological trajectory toward developing space warfare capabilities. The collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991 led to a lull in overt space militarization, Yet research into anti-satellite, ASAT technology continued under various guises. The U.S., focusing on non-nuclear kinetic interceptors, achieved a breakthrough in 2008 by successfully destroying a malfunctioning satellite with a ship-launched missile. While this action was framed as removing a potential hazard, it sent shockwaves through the international community, highlighting the potential for escalating tensions and fueling fears of a new arms race in space. The pursuit of ASAT capabilities extends beyond physical interceptors. The US, Russia, and China are believed to explore directed energy weapons such as lasers and microwave emitters that could be deployed on the ground, in the air, or even in space. These systems can disrupt, disable, or damage satellites without causing immediate large-scale debris fields. While less visually dramatic than a missile intercept, these directed energy weapons add a new layer of complexity and uncertainty to the evolving landscape of space warfare strategies. The legacy of these Cold War technological pursuits is a transformed understanding of space. No longer seen solely as a domain for scientific exploration, orbits around Earth have become potential battlegrounds. Nations now factor in space-based assets for both offensive and defensive postures. With whispers of a nuclear space weapon swirling around Russia, a crucial task lies ahead, sifting through the rumor mill. Can we separate fact from fiction? What are the potential capabilities, and even more importantly, the devastating consequences of such a weapon becoming a reality? The rumors swirling around a potential Russian nuclear space weapon have cast a long shadow over the international community. Amidst the whispers and speculation, a critical imperative emerges to sift through the murky intelligence reports, separate fact from fiction, and analyze the potential consequences of such a devastating technology. The latest chapter in this saga began with the cryptic and unusual statement issued by Republican Congressman Mike Turner, chairman of the House Intelligence Committee. Turner's declaration of a serious national security threat without providing further context fueled speculation and ignited a media frenzy. The timing, amidst faltering Western support for Ukraine, raised concerns that this disclosure might be a calculated move to bolster political arguments for continued military and financial aid against Russia. Intelligence sources painted a concerning picture, alleging that Russia is developing a nuclear space weapon capable of targeting and disabling vital Western satellites. While the full details remain shrouded in secrecy, the potential implications of such a weapon are staggering. This alleged move by Russia would not only violate the 1967 Outer Space Treaty, but also mark a dangerous escalation in space warfare tactics. Central to this situation is the issue of credibility. 
By their very nature, intelligence communities operate within a realm of classified information and calculated ambiguity. When such information enters the public domain, it becomes subject to intense scrutiny, interpretation, and potential politicization. Experts have expressed skepticism about the prospect of Russia deploying a nuclear weapon in orbit. The technical hurdles involved are immense, and the strategic value of such a move remains questionable. The indiscriminate and long-lasting effects of detonating a nuclear device in space would pose a threat to all satellites, including Russia's assets, effectively making it a self-destructive strategy. Several alternative possibilities have emerged amidst the skepticism. Some analysts believe the intelligence warning may point to a nuclear-powered space system rather than a weaponized one. Russia has a history of developing nuclear-powered technology for space applications. While the Outer Space Treaty does not ban such systems, they still raise safety and security concerns due to their dual-use potential. Another scenario suggests that this might be a complex game of nuclear brinkmanship. As Putin repeatedly rattles his atomic saber, even vague threats and unsubstantiated claims about new capabilities serve Russia's strategy to maintain an aura of unpredictable menace. This situation destabilizes global security, whether spurred by fact, fiction, or deliberate misinformation. It amplifies anxiety surrounding space as a potential arena for devastating conflict. The international community remains deeply divided on the integrity of the alleged Russian nuclear space weapon. Analyzing the potential motivations behind such a project, the feasibility of its development, and the destructive capabilities it could entail paints a complex picture. By scrutinizing the available information, we can attempt to piece together the plausibility and nature of this rumored capability. Space policy experts and security analysts have expressed significant skepticism about the practicality and strategic advantage of deploying a nuclear weapon to orbit. The risks appear to outweigh any potential gains. Detonating a nuclear device in space would create a massive electromagnetic pulse, EMP, and a long-lasting debris field, jeopardizing Russia's vital satellites. The unpredictable and potentially long-term damage to all nations' space assets makes it akin to a scorched earth tactic. Some analysts offer a more plausible explanation. The intelligence points to a nuclear-powered space system rather than outright weaponization. Russia has previous experience developing nuclear-powered space vehicles. While such technology raises concerns about safety and dual-use potential, it falls within a gray area of the Outer Space Treaty, whereas deploying a weapon of mass destruction would be a clear violation. Some experts have even hypothesized that Russia is conducting tests or development activity that the U.S. intelligence community has misinterpreted as a nuclear weapon. Technological development in space-based systems, often shrouded in secrecy, can lead to misinterpretations of intent and capability. Amidst these technical and strategic questions, there's the inescapable political dimension. The timing of Turner's statement, amidst waning Western support for Ukraine, suggests a possible attempt to galvanize support for a more robust response towards Russia. Moreover, Russia's history of strategic posturing with its nuclear arsenal, as evidenced by Putin's recent pronouncements, amplifies ambiguity and fuels the fear factor of whether an actual weapon exists or not. If Russia is exploring this path, what specific capabilities might be possible? Beyond the widespread impact of an electromagnetic pulse, EMP, other potential avenues for disruption exist. A non-nuclear high-yield explosive could be used to target and destroy individual satellites through a direct impact. Another possibility lies in the realm of directed energy weapons. Powerful lasers or microwave emitters deployed on the ground or in orbit could damage or disable delicate satellite instruments and electronics without creating a destructive debris field. While development hurdles exist, this avenue provides a subtler and potentially more strategic approach to space warfare. Suppose a weapon capable of unleashing such catastrophic consequences were ever deployed. Would it be a game-changer in modern warfare, or a reckless gamble that could unravel decades of space exploration and international cooperation? Stay tuned. The news that Russia may be developing a nuclear space weapon sends a tremor through the international security landscape. It heralds a profound shift in the potential role of space within the realm of nuclear strategy, a domain traditionally focused on Earth-based atomic weapons and their delivery systems. Understanding how this could reshape the delicate balance of power and potentially destabilize deterrence requires a deep dive into strategic calculations, escalation risks, and the future of arms control. 
Several factors make space an attractive potential arena for nuclear weapons deployment. Space-based weapons could, theoretically, evade ground-based early warning systems and missile defenses. This could provide a perceived first strike advantage or so the logic goes. Such a perceived advantage could fuel fears of preemptive strikes and escalate tensions even in situations that previously would not have reached the nuclear threshold. Beyond direct strikes on Earth, space-based nuclear weapons pose a significant threat to military and strategic satellites. Taking out critical navigation and communication satellites would cripple an adversary's ability to wage a conventional war by degrading their precision strike capabilities and their command and control networks. Even more alarmingly, Russia could be seeking the ability to target early warning satellites, which provide the first sign of a nuclear attack and other components of a country's nuclear command and control infrastructure. Crippling these assets could, under extreme pressure, lead to misinterpretation and miscalculation, increasing the risk of misjudging an attack and triggering a full-scale nuclear exchange. The prospect of nuclear weapons in space erodes the principles of nuclear deterrence, the very foundation of a precarious yet functional balance that has kept the world from the brink of nuclear war for decades. Deterrence depends on a mutual understanding of vulnerability and the promise of unacceptable retaliation in the face of aggression. Space-based weapons create a dangerous belief that a devastating first strike, whether against terrestrial targets or against an opponent's space-based assets, could be achieved without retaliation, thus undermining the stability provided by mutually assured destruction. The introduction of space-based weapons amplifies the use-it-or-lose-it dilemma facing nuclear-armed states. Faced with the prospect of losing strategic assets in space, the pressure to use them preemptively in a crisis will grow, creating a hair-trigger scenario for catastrophic escalation. Furthermore, the inherent fragility of space-based assets creates a vulnerability far more remarkable than traditional nuclear weapon systems like land-based ICBMs in hardened silos. The fear of losing critical capabilities incentivizes preemptive strikes and a shoot-first mentality with dire consequences. The specter of an unchecked arms race looms large. As more countries develop space-based weapons, a cascading cycle of escalation is a distinct possibility. This could see the rise of increasingly sophisticated weapons designed to neutralize or preempt enemy systems, with countermeasures following an ever-evolving spiral of technological brinksmanship in orbit. The prospect of this rumored Russian weapon amplifies existing anxieties surrounding the militarization of space. Both Russia and the U.S. have tested anti-satellite capabilities in the past, but deploying a nuclear weapon marks a significant and terrifying escalation. This underscores the urgent need to understand the motivations behind such a move and craft strategies to deter adversaries from deploying and potentially using these devastating weapons. Understanding the rationale behind Russia's actions is crucial. One possibility is the desire to offset the U.S. advantage in space-based assets. Russia might believe that such a weapon could counterbalance U.S. superiority, acting as an equalizer in the event of a conflict. Further, this could signal Russia's willingness to use nuclear weapons to achieve its objectives even beyond a direct attack on terrestrial targets, increasing uncertainty and amplifying its image as a reckless and unpredictable atomic power. Understanding the implications of Russia's rumored capability necessitates a broader view of the ongoing competition in space. The US, Russia, and China are racing to expand their capabilities and dominate this strategic domain. While conventional military operations remain heavily reliant on space-based assets, there's a growing risk that space itself could become a direct theater of conflict. This trend echoes similar historical debates surrounding naval and air power. As new technologies shape expectations and fears around these emerging domains, space presents a new frontier where technological innovation could lead to unanticipated advantages and unexpected vulnerabilities. The possibility of deploying nuclear weapons in space erodes the foundations of deterrence, upending decades of strategic thinking based on mutually assured destruction. Traditional deterrence concepts relied on the vulnerability of ground-based nuclear assets. A space-based weapon system could theoretically evade early detection and bypass ground-based missile defenses, creating a devastating first-strike advantage and increasing the incentive for preemptive action. Additionally, the Outer Space Treaty, while a pillar of international space law, needs to be equipped to address the weaponization of space. Ambiguities about what constitutes a weapon, the need for robust verification mechanisms and a focus on weapons of mass destruction 
expose areas for improvement in an arena where technology is rapidly outpacing existing agreements. The international community faces a daunting task. Strengthening existing arms control treaties is a crucial first step. There's an urgent need to address emerging technologies, define terms in an evolving context, and establish comprehensive verification systems. The U.S. and its allies must reassess their vulnerabilities and pursue defensive strategies tailored to protecting vital space assets. This could include investments in less vulnerable satellite architectures with increased redundancy and maneuverability, alongside developing countermeasures against anti-satellite weaponry. The fundamental question is whether space will become an arena for overt conflict or a domain governed by new rules and restraint. The decisions made now by the US, Russia, China and other players will determine the fate of this final frontier and shape the potential trajectory of future warfare. But how will the international community react to this emerging threat? Will diplomacy prevail or will the world witness a new era of space-based nuclear brinkmanship? The rumor of a Russian nuclear space weapon has sent tremors across the global geopolitical landscape. While this alleged capability's nature and deployment status remain uncertain, the potential implications have triggered a chorus of alarm, condemnation, and calls for action within the international community. News of Russia's potential foray into space-based nuclear weaponry has drawn swift denouncement from the U.S., its NATO allies, and other nations. Policy hawks, space experts, and those fearing a return to Cold War tensions have united in their concern. Even nations less directly impacted whose militaries may not be as reliant on space-based assets recognize this development's destabilizing effects on the balance of power and the fragility of peace. Russia's actions, even short of actual deployment, are seen as a dangerous escalation in the militarization of space. The threat to vital military and civilian satellites undermines nations' reliance on space-based infrastructure. It fuels fear and uncertainty, eroding the strained trust between Russia and the West. On the diplomatic front, the U.S. and its allies are engaged in a complex dance, seeking to deter Russia from further pursuit or deployment of this technology while navigating the strained relationship inflamed by the war in Ukraine. There's an urgent push to revitalize and reinforce existing arms control treaties and international norms. The Foundational Outer Space Treaty of 1967 explicitly prohibits the placement of weapons of mass destruction in Earth's orbit. However, the treaty's definitions and ambiguities are being tested in this new era, strengthening this vital agreement, updating definitions, and establishing robust verification mechanisms are paramount in preserving space as a sustainable domain. Beyond treaties, diplomatic efforts also focus on building consensus within the international community. Despite their complex relationships with Russia, the U.S. actively engages with partners like China and India. The goal is to form a unified front that discourages Russia from escalating the situation and destabilizing the balance of power. In parallel with diplomatic efforts, the U.S. and NATO are reassessing their space-based assets and strategies. Vulnerability analyses lead to investments in more resilient, less centralized satellite architectures. The goal is to create redundancy and reduce the catastrophic consequences of a potential attack on a critical communications or surveillance satellite. Efforts are also underway to develop effective countermeasures against anti-satellite threats. This includes technological advancements in maneuvering satellites to mitigate targeting, improving early detection systems, and developing ground-based or space-based weapons capable of destroying or neutralizing incoming threats. The specter of nuclear weapons in space has amplified the sense of urgency surrounding these defensive measures. While the immediate focus is on shielding vital assets, these advancements might also form the foundation for a future deterrence strategy in this new theater of potential conflict. Space law experts and diplomats are debating the legality of Russia's alleged actions and the potential implications for existing international treaties. The Outer Space Treaty forms a crucial reference point. Still, the focus has shifted to whether a nuclear-armed space weapon, depending upon its exact nature, would violate the letter or spirit of the agreement. Similarly, the use of indiscriminate weapons, which could cause widespread damage, may counter other conventions of warfare. The potential for a cascading debris field as a result of a detonation creates further legal complexities. Such an event could have devastating and lasting consequences, hindering access to vital orbits for all nations, and potentially violating the fundamental human right to a safe and sustainable environment. 
The implications of Russia's rumored nuclear space weapon extend far beyond immediate military or geopolitical concerns. The potential deployment of such a system signals a dangerous erosion of trust and a willingness to undermine the delicate balance that has prevented open conflict between nuclear powers for decades. The very notion that Russia may be developing and willing to deploy nuclear weapons in space shatters the unspoken norms that have, thus far, limited atomic armaments to Earth-based systems. This perceived breach of restraint raises the specter of a future where other nations feel compelled to follow suit, fearing they may be left at a strategic disadvantage. The implications go beyond simply possessing these weapons. The act of testing them would further escalate the situation. Detonating a nuclear weapon in space, even without directly targeting another nation's assets, would likely violate international humanitarian law due to the indiscriminate and potentially long-lasting effects of radiation, electromagnetic pulse, and the cascading Kessler syndrome of debris. Such a test would send a powerful and destabilizing message about Russia's willingness to challenge existing norms and treaties. History reminds us that technological leaps often precipitate an arms race. The fear of falling behind fuels a spiral of development and countermeasures. The mere suggestion of Russia possessing a nuclear space capability could motivate the U.S. and other nations to ramp up their development of space-based weapons or invest heavily in neutralizing technologies, setting off a dangerous chain reaction.